I'd like to say a little bit about what we've been doing on campus uh, with technology to try to further teaching and learning in various ways. And I think kind of at a, at a top level, since the theme here is about personalization, I think it's also important to just realize that in learning, learning is a psychological process. An individual tries to master something or come to a uh, greater understanding or develop skills, but it's also a social process. And so I think you see that both in all of the kind of activities we're involved with. We're both looking at uh, different kinds of material, different media, different ways for an individual to pursue their interests, but we're also connecting people up and, and trying to figure out uh, when is it best to, to have a community involved in learning, how do we leverage them uh, and build uh, larger communities that bring more uh, interest and input into our process here. So this is just uh, to put a graph up uh, to give an idea of, of what the scale of activities on campus here over the last three years. Uh, I was vice provost for online learning and now I'm merging into the slow lane of the university and uh, becoming vice provost for teaching and learning. But I, th I think it's really important that we take some of the ideas of the last few years which were really pursued in an experimental way and integrate them more broadly into the uh, university process. So this is just, I think over three years, we've involved, been involved in about 450 projects. Uh, that involves about 200 Stanford instructors, uh, touches 200 distinct courses. Many of them we've done revisions and tried to improve over a period of time. So that's 200 faculty is about 10% of the faculty. That's a pretty good uh, number to reach in any kind of uh, revolution, let's say. So I thought I'd give you a few examples of things that uh, different uh, faculty and instructors have been involved with. You saw a really great example in the history video uh, that you just saw. Here's another historical project. Uh, this is about uh, medieval manuscripts. Uh, Elaine Treharn is our me medievalist in the, in the English department and we, to support her interest in uh, medieval manuscripts, took a camera crew into the Stanford Library, which has a great extensive collection of medieval manuscripts that are not otherwise available to many people, and also the Cambridge UK Library, and produced digital representations of this material so that her students, our students here on campus, have broader access to that material, and also we can make these publicly available as we have uh, to medievalists worldwide. So that's been a great boost to Elaine, a great boost to the medievalists, and I hope this will be valuable resources uh, to them going forward. Here's an example of something that's more socially based. Here's a course on open education that involves uh, participants from Canada, Ghana, Mexico, United States. So I think for Stanford students to have a discussion here on campus, we uh, strive for diversity, we strive for variety of, of interests, we try to fill classes with students from different backgrounds, but when you connect to other people from four or five different countries and you put uh, interesting topics out for debate uh, that have a broad interest and those in different parts of the world will have different perspectives, uh, you get an entirely different uh, kind of conversation. I thought I'd give us a third example, uh, a project here that's an example, uh, an instance of a pattern that I've seen several different times in several different uh, situations here. This is a platform for writing around a given context. So the uh, Lacuna Stories project started with a concept of providing material to learners around the events of 9-11 here in the United States and letting people annotate the material that they see and produce their own personal recollection and writing about where they were at the time, how this affected them, how this affected their family members. So in this context, individuals have resources, input, video, text, things to read, pictures, and then they create their own story, and their own story is there for others to read and critique. So it's really a platform for creativity. I kind of think of this as a laboratory. In science and technology, we have laboratory classes because there's equipment and a framework and a set of things that students can do outside of a lecture or another kind of format to experiment 
uh, get dig into the topic. And we haven't really had laboratories in many of the other topic areas, but this really functions in the same way that a laboratory would function uh, in a science course. So this started with that one theme, and the, the paradigm has been effective so that now nine Stanford courses are using this platform, and a couple of Berkeley courses have picked it up. So I think we're seeing some inertia around uh, this particular idea. I thought I'd show you a little bit about how the project has evolved over time. Initially, it was about annotation, people writing in a blog format their own stories. As we progressed over a couple of years, uh, we added more features and added more topics. So above the line, it shows different ways that uh, a learner can interact with the material and create their, create their own story. And on the bottom, I've shown uh, an increasing number of topics and course areas uh, that have picked up this paradigm. So one of the points I want to make is that I think everyone has seen uh, MOOCs of a certain format where you have a video lecture followed by simple multiple choice questions and a discussion forum. I think that's really the tip of the iceberg. It's kind of a way to... Uh, make the common format we have here of a lecture course more broadly available. But really all of the interest here, in my opinion, lies in exploring different forms of pedagogy, different ways of engaging learners in material. And I think that really in five or 10 years, we'll see a much broader array of things online and for learners than uh, the lecture course. Uh, together with the increasing features and the wider range of topics covered uh, in courses based on this platform and activities based on the platform, I also wanted to make the kind of the research point that as we proceed and provide richer interaction with material, uh, we can also collect different kinds of data about learner activities, try to understand what's effective for an inv individual, what kind of features, what kind of prompts, what kind of topics, what makes a successful experience for learners, and how do we uh, generalize from one activity to use to learn something that we can use in, in other courses. So really this is an exploratory process uh, we as academics are always like to ask big questions, try things out, reflect on our activities, see what's been successful, talk with our colleagues, and proceed. Uh, so I think w uh, this is really this effort, uh, the last few years, the increased interest in teaching on campus has, in effect, turned our own teaching activity into a part of a, of a form of research activity. I'm really excited to see the faculty interest in this, and I think that's uh, uh, going to change the university and uh, hopefully participate in the transformation of higher education in a positive way. So going forward, there are many big questions. I think fundamental for us as educators is how can we provide the best possible learning opportunities for students. And I think that includes our enrolled students in the kind of programs we've had, uh, undergraduate programs, graduate programs, but really a, a university like Stanford is a great resource. We've collected many th great thinkers, leading researchers, and so on, and if we can interact more broadly through other kinds of programs, that helps us with our research. We draw on students for our inspiration and also helps us carry our message and the ideas we develop with our students uh, more broadly. And there is all, also lots of issues, as you know, about cost and the scale and so on. And, and if we can help address those in some way, being led by quality and effectiveness and things that connect well with our learners, I think that will be a, a great direction also for us. Those are my quick comments. I hope you have a great day here, and I look forward to talking to uh, many of you throughout the day. Thank you.